Yo, welcome to my math here, math. Today we're gonna talk about something a little different. We're gonna talk about the fact that there's infinitely many prime numbers in the world. So remember, a prime number is any number who only has two factors, one in itself, right? Two distinct factors. So, and the only even, the first prime number and the only even prime in the world is two. And then it's three, then it's five, then it's seven, then it's 11, 13, and the list just keeps on going on and on. And there's really kind of no pattern behind all the primes, which is kind of the cool thing about them. However, there are infinitely many primes in the whole world. And to show this requires some proof. We're gonna do a little proof, a little small proof on the fact that there's infinitely many primes. Okay. So we're gonna do a, what's called the proof by contradiction. We're gonna assume that there are finitely many primes. There's finitely many. That is, we have a list of all the primes in the whole wide world. Let's say P is the set of all the primes in the whole wide world, big P, and then these little P1, comma, P2, comma, all the way to, let's say, P sub K. Some number K. So there's finitely many. There could, K could be five, K could be one, so there's only one prime. K could be a million and two, but there's a million and two primes. But we're gonna assume for now that the number of primes in the world is finite. There's not infinitely many. We're gonna wanna come up with a contradiction. Okay, consider the following number let's call it capital N, which is equal to, I'm gonna times all the primes. First, P1 times P2 times dot, 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 times all the way up to PK, and then I'm gonna add one, plus the number one. So it's the product of all the primes in the whole wide world, plus one, okay? Since this number N is bigger than all the p's, all the pi, and pi just means i can be anything from 1 through k, so it's bigger than all the pi's, that means n cannot be prime. So it's not in that list, it's bigger than all of them. And if you're not prime, you must be composite. So n is a composite number, okay? That means that some prime in this world must be a factor of n. So then, let's say p sub j, that means one of these guys, fits inside n. Okie doke. So P sub J fits inside N. Also, this P, J, fits inside the product, right? Because he's one of them. So if you put that product divided by P sub J, the PJs cancel and you're still an integer, so we still have, you know, it's a nice number. So P sub J fits inside, by the way, another word for fits inside of is divides. Mathematicians use the word divides. So P sub A, sorry, P sub J divides the big N. Sorry, uh, yeah, divides the big N. P sub, A, P sub J divides the product, P1 times P2 times dot, 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 PK. Okay. And then there's a rule in the world of number theory. If something fits inside of or divides two things, it divides their difference. Then, P sub J fits inside. So N, which is this, minus the product becomes just one, right? N minus P1 times P2 times PK is actually equal to, because the products cancel, it's actually gonna be equal 
to 1. So then that means that this prime piece of j fits inside of 1, but no prime in the world fits inside of 1. That is a contradiction, so there are infinitely many primes in the whole world. Oh, <laughs>